Olympics has only been my dream since I was a kid. Like that's the one thing in this sport that I really wanted to achieve. So world championships, yes, they mean a lot to me, but my one big dream was Olympics. So I think for this and especially going overseas and boxing the best in the world and I was pretty successful overseas against some of the best in the world. So coming back to Australia and having to perform in front of an Australian crowd, you kind of have this expectation, even if it's not real, it's in your head. I think it was that I wasn't able to walk away from it on my own terms. And I still had a lot of questions about myself. I, I was dealing with a lot of imposter syndrome, you know what I mean? Because I'd still watch boxing. Um, and so it made me question myself a lot and question what I thought I knew about myself. Um, because when I, when I walked away from it, I thought that I was a guy that had potential to be world-class, but I just hadn't recognized or realized it yet. Thank you for joining us in no, the flats. Thanks for having us. Uh, back again for, for Ike and uh, welcome Monique. Thank it's you. great to have you both in. Been... Uh, Keen to get you guys in for a while because I've been uh, following your journey and uh, since we last had you on, you were just starting yeah, back yeah, in the boxing yeah, game yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's been really cool to see you guys both link up uh, at Stockade and now basically the the team to beat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Duo little, you little formed. Bit. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, been awesome seeing you guys travel around the world and Thanks, uh, man. Yeah. trying to reach the goal both of you of the olympics i guess is that uh yeah the, i mean the, that's the that's main the, focus yeah that's number one yeah definitely the big dream that's for sure yeah and uh how has it all been it's something that i didn't know went into it was the amount of travel that you guys have been doing and the level the amount of competition you're doing how has the how's the last year been i think to be honest we didn't have an idea of it either yeah so we kind of came into it not expecting to travel as much as we have to be honest with you i think if you looked at last year we didn't we only traveled nationally yeah yeah we didn't well yeah, yeah i didn't leave the country at all yeah. um you went to I thailand thailand last uh, year for a training camp but yeah, um, this year has been crazy. We've yeah. Both probably cleared like six countries was, or yeah, something. And, um, a ridiculous amount of training. A lot of interstate travel as well. Um, been all around WA, South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, mm. Victoria, um, for training, fighting. Um, and... Yeah, it's just been non-stop. We're always in the gym. Um, even even when we're having our rest days, we're in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a rest day, you might go for a 6K run or whatever it is. Yeah, that is our um, rest day, hey? Just a light jog. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of getting to the Olympics, we've got slightly different paths now because um, we're at the Pacific Games qualifiers. When was that? Uh, early, or, early this month. Yeah. Um, Monique won gold, so that means that she's through on the team that goes to the Pacific Games. Um, I didn't win gold, so now I'm in a position where I've kind of got to stay at the heels of um, the guy that did win gold, um, keep training hard, competing as much as I can. And um, basically, if he doesn't get through Pacific Games, then I'll have a chance to box off against him to see who goes to the next Olympic qualifiers, which will be early next year. Um, or as well, you know, if he gets injured or something like that, then I might have a, an opportunity to be like an alternate. So um, for me, I've just got to, yeah, stay biting at the ankles, training as hard as I can, competing as much as I can and just try and imp impress the selection panel um, and hopefully still get a shot um, at the qualifiers. Awesome. So it is that competitive. It's like one person is going to make it basically. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you, if you, um, you're either on the team or you're not, there's no like kind of floating in and out. So, um, yeah. yeah. Which makes it good in a way, like not obviously now, like it's a bit hard, but it keeps you driven and motivated to just yeah. keep going. 
and not to slack off, even if you're at the top. Yeah. Just to keep going because there is someone, like I said, biting at your ankles. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so your what's your current uh, position now? You've got you're at the top of that table. You've, yeah. You've won the nationals like multiple yeah. times and sort of stuff. So that gets you up the top, but you still have to fight in these preliminary yeah. events. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. After winning nationals three weeks ago in Perth, I um. So I officially got selected. Um. I think it was. Maybe two weeks ago, while we were yeah, over yeah, in it was Bali. a few days later. They're pretty quick yeah. with the turnaround. It got selected to um, represent Australia at Pacific Games at the fifty kilos, um, and I have to win Pacific Games to qualify for Olympics. Yeah, right. So that's not an Australian team no. thing. It's, oh, a, it it's is. to get into. Yeah, to, yeah. To it, the, so, so that's to get into the Australian team still. Yeah. Oh no! So I've been selected for the Australian yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so now it's, it's just literally qualifying for the world, for the Olympics. Basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, if you're so obviously the team that we sent to the Olympics is the Australian team, but um, every athlete on the Australian team in various sports has qualified through a certain quota. Gotcha. So it's not yeah. good enough to just be the best in your country if you want to go to the Olympics. You've got to be the mm. best in your region or. Other than after the regional qualifiers, then they send us to like people that don't make it. There's for boxing, there's two international qualifiers, one in March, one in May, I think. Yeah, Italy and Thailand. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you've got to be one of the best in the world, not just the best in your country to yeah. make yeah. it, basically. And how are you feeling about those Pacific? <coughs> um, pretty, pretty confident. Um, You'll clean it up. Hopefully. She'll clean it up. I hope so. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> yeah, but she'll clean it up. <laughs> I think there um, there might be a few like strays that just come out of the woodworks that might be really good that we have to be careful for. But other than that, I'm pretty confident with it. I've boxed New Zealand before, um, done some comp sparring with her. And yeah, she was no worries, but who knows? She might have gone home and adapted. And so just got to be prepared for her and... But I'm pretty confident. Um, I'm keen for them, yeah. Absolutely. And um, tell us a bit about the uh, the Europe adventure you both went on. Um, oh, yeah, February. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was – we were close to chatting to you just before that. Um, yeah, we just and couldn't tighten down mm, the yeah, and yeah. busy schedule. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been just like – from looking online, it looks like you've just been from from tournament to tournament. And yeah. um, I guess the the Olympic boxing is a bit different. Where you're you're, you're boxing like every day for like a week, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is crazy too. Yeah, the draw can end up that way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how was how was Europe looked like a lot of fun and it was, was mad. It was probably that there. trip was probably my favorite this year. Yeah, that was sick. It was really fun. Um, we went to we were competing in Hungary and and Bulgaria. Um, yeah. We stopped through Poland, I think, in between, but yeah. just at the airport. Just at like, the airport, yeah. um, we didn't really spend any time in any other countries. But um, yeah, I mean, it was sick. Hungary was like a winter wonderland. Yeah, um, we were we were we weren't in Budapest. We were in a city called Debrecen. Um, and that's like, is it even a city or just a town? It's just a town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like four hour drive from the airport so when we got when we got there we'd all been led to believe it was like 30 minutes to an hour or something mm. oh yeah <laughs> there's some memories um yeah we thought it was like 30 minutes to an hour from the airport um to this town um and we're just sitting on the bus thinking when are we gonna get there yeah and i think it was like four four and a half hours or something before and then we on top of that there. we had like a stopover at a petrol station oh, waiting yeah. for we're, yeah we're waiting there for like an hour what yeah, were we waiting we're for we're waiting for what country were the kazakhstan or uzbekistan um Maybe. no it was lithuania, lithuania they're on the yeah. bus with us yeah yeah yeah, yeah we're yeah. waiting for them yeah look at that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was a good tournament. And one of those tournaments you got lot fighter of the tournament. This one, yeah, yeah this yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. That that girl there, it was probably one of my hardest um competitions by far. She was very talented. Has she won a European games or something before? Mm. Or? 
Or I'm like unsure. A European games, I'm maybe? unsure yeah. about her, but um, the one I boxed in um, Bulgaria, Poland. Poland. Okay. She was. She. I think she won European silver. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a good trip. Mm. I think too, because it was such a new team that everyone just got in Hungary. Everyone was still a bit weird with each other, but then in Bulgaria, Bulgaria we got on really yeah, well. Yeah, everyone got to know each I think other. What there was probably only like three or four people on that team returning, and then it was a big team. How many yeah. boxes were there? Like twenty something, twenty two. I'd maybe? like to say twenty three or twenty four, but yeah, I could yeah. be wrong. And only like three or four of them were like had been on the team for a, a long time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was a bunch of fresh faces, including me. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was cool. Like, we bonded mm-hmm. really well, um, you know, spurred each other on, helped each other with training. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, I think that's that's one of the things about sport that – you often forget when you get super competitive is like the the memories and like the relationships and stuff that you get to build during it. Um, yeah. You, you sort of forget to appreciate them sometimes because you're so focused on the goal. But um, yeah, yeah, it was sick. I'm really, really grateful for that trip. Yeah. <clears throat> and you kind of think of, you know, boxing as that um, individual pursuit. Yeah. Um, yeah. How important has has it been, you guys, both out of Canberra, uh, almost, and building that team amongst yeah. yourselves as well? Yeah, that's that's. Um, I've been really grateful for that as well, having you um, yeah. when we've gone away because, yeah, boxing they call it the loneliest sport, um, and I think that probably applies to all combat sports, um, but um, it really is. You know what I mean. Um, for the most part, you're just in your own head um, and you just got to deal with your own hurdles and your own demons or whatever it yeah. is. But um, uh, having someone that I was traveling with that not only is on the Australian team with me but is from the same gym as me, same city as me, was um, really, really important I think as well, um, helping get through like the more difficult times and um, we've grown a lot closer as well. I mean, yeah. even though we we've known each other probably since we were like little kids, yeah. but we didn't really start actually getting to know yeah. each other until we started training together th- two or three years ago. Yeah. But um, this year has really brought us close, just all the traveling and all the early mornings and stuff, yeah. you know. Pushing yeah. each other through. <clears throat> I'm definitely like very grateful for Ike because at the end of the day, like I remember I lost in Bulgaria and I didn't want to, I didn't want anyone's advice, but Ike's. Like I couldn't listen to anyone but Ike for some reason. Like mm. and that, like I was really upset about it, and he was the only one that made me feel better. And I think it was that piece of home, like that, like made me feel a lot better. So it's I'm been very grateful for Ike, but also just uh, to like that motivation too, because like he's such a um, driven athlete. So like I definitely look up to you a lot too. That's that's only a height thing. <laughs> just, you, you have to look up to me if you Physically, want to look at me in yeah. the face. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I 100% agree with that. And like, you know, training, especially because uh, I only came back to the sport maybe uh, three years ago. Yeah. And so training at the same gym as Monique and, and she's doing all these crazy things that you've never seen anyone do before. And I'm looking at I'm like, how the hell am I going to do that? Um, but trying to do it over and over again and failing until eventually I can start mm. doing some of those things like that, that really helps. And then I think, you know, for you, it would help having someone that's trying to push yeah. the envelope and get closer 100%. and makes you want to push. Because it's hard being the king of the gym sometimes because um, you, you can get complacent. Mm-hmm. Monique doesn't get complacent, but I know there are plenty of people that do when they're like yeah, the top the dog top. in their gym. Like, you know, they're just like, well, you know, I, I'm – I'm better than everyone here, so, you know. So I can pull back um, a bit. Now. Yeah, yeah. But um, what yeah. were some of those things that you uh, were watching <coughs> Monique do when you f- came back? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, one, of my, one of my favorite ones or least favorite ones um, is uh, our coach Gary gets us to do like a from a push-up position, walk backwards into a handstand up a wall and then do a push-up 
in the handstand and then come back down. Um, that kills me. Um, he used to um, try to get me, I think he still gets you to do it sometimes, uh, to do come back down and then do a, a roll, a, like, yeah, a like burpee. a somersault forwards yeah. into a burpee and then backwards. I kept cranking my neck going backwards. I think I just got, I'm just too long. <laughs> 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 I kept cranking my neck on the ground and he just stopped me from doing it. He's like, yeah, you're not, you're not going to do that one. Um, but yeah, that's difficult. Um, it was a pistol squats that you were getting like on the wobble board. Was it those ones? And he was telling you to do them. Oh. And you were like, no, nah, I'm never going to be able to do them. And I then can, you do I can them. now, yeah. No, yeah, you yeah. know what it was? It was the um, the push-ups. Oh, yeah, yeah. On he gets the one-legged uh, push-ups. Yeah, one-legged push-ups with my foot on like a Swiss ball. Um, Monique yeah. does it. <laughs> so I do it with um, these bands that hang down, but they've got like handles and it's sort of firm if you've got your weight right. Monique does it on a resistance band. She does the push-ups with one foot on this tiny little medicine <laughs> ball that's like rock solid so you don't get any give under your foot. I'm still working up to that. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's really cool yeah. to see like how far like I remember you came up to me like, no, nah, I'm never going to do it and yeah. then now you're doing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like easy, like it's nothing. Yeah. Or standing on the on the yoga ball. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, And doing yeah. squats on the yoga ball and like yeah. shadow boxing or standing on it. That's... I that's think I can do that cool. better than you. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but that's one where the first time you try to do it, you just fall off you straight away. Yeah. And you're like, I'm never going to be able to do this. And then two sessions later, you're doing it. Like, and like you see people like Aaron Reed just jump on. Like yeah, he so runs. We've got this, so um, there's this. He cornered us actually yeah, yesterday um at the fights because Gary, our coach, was sick. But um, Aaron used to be trained by Gary as well, so he's done a lot of the same things. Um, and it was at aspiring day. I was doing a fundraiser for my world championships trip. Um, and he was there and I was telling him what Gary was getting me to do. He's like, Oh, I remember doing that. Um, and he brought out the Swiss ball and he literally, <laughs> ju- this is, so I've only, I'd only, um, done it once before this. So I'd struggled. I'd just fallen off heaps and he pulled it out. And this is like a 43, 44 year old yeah. man. And he's wearing Crocs and he just jumps on it and sticks it. And then he's just like standing on the Swiss ball and then he starts throwing punches and doing squats. And I was like, this is fucking insane. This doesn't make it's any humbling. sense. It's but really yeah, humbling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massively. <clears throat> yeah. And I guess all that um, is what goes, is what you don't see that goes into yeah. the fights on the day. Yeah. yeah. And learning today about sort of how cutthroat uh, this selection process is. Like one fight um, missed and you're out, yeah. you know. Um, how do you guys handle that pressure of the fights um, leading up to them? Do you well, want to go first? Well, I was going to say I didn't really handle it too well this time around for the first time and I think it's because Olympics has only been my dream since I was a kid. Like that's the one thing in this sport that I really wanted to achieve. So world championships, yes, they mean a lot to me, but my one big dream was Olympics. So I think for this and especially going overseas and boxing the best in the world and I was pretty successful overseas against some of the best in the world. So coming back to Australia and having to perform in front of an Australian crowd, you kind of have this expectation, even if it's not real, it's in your head. And like you have this kind of expectation to perform. And my first fight at nationals, I I won and I won convincingly. And I, um, But I just know I can box better. So I had so much, put so much pressure on myself that I started over committing with my punches. I just, I was boxing stressed. And so I didn't handle the pressure well at all that day. But then in the finals, completely fine. Like I changed my mindset and I reminded myself why I do this. And I think it, it is a massive head game. But yeah, I think Mm. it's so important. Like I think pressure is really good in like training environments. Mm where like it makes you push yourself but as soon as you go into the ring feeling under pressure it's yeah Mm. sometimes game over i think for me um it's it's been an interesting year in terms of dealing with the mental side of things because um i found like 
at, at nationals, actually, I felt like I didn't put enough pressure on myself and wasn't nervous enough. Mm. Um, so I was, I was almost too blasé about it. Um, not because I felt like it was an easy win or anything like that. It wasn't anything. It wasn't overconfidence. Um, it was more, uh, I, I didn't feel fired up. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't get in there with like a little bit of butterflies telling me, you know, like you've got to, you've got to go. Um, and so I was just, um, my performance was a bit uninspired, I would say. Um, and I've been sort of wrestling with that all year if, in finding the balance between like being amped up but um, not uh, overconfident but then also being relaxed but not to a point where I'm not caring. Um, it's been difficult to find a balance. Like um, I, I feel like my best performance this year was probably – at the world championships uh, in my second fight against um, the world number one. Um, and that for me, I didn't feel nervous coming into that fight at all. I felt really excited and I felt like it was important to perform well. Um, but I suppose uh, I wasn't, um, I don't know, I wasn't scared at all. I was just, um, I was just ready to go in there and, and um, do what I needed to do. Um, and, yeah, I, I've been trying to find that sweet point mentally um, before a fight so that I can do that. Um, I think I did a pretty good job of it uh, yesterday, actually, um, at the Hellenic Club. I, f I managed to get a little bit of butterflies going, but um, I was also, like, turned up and excited and, like, happy to perform but still focused. So, um, yeah, that's an important part of training as well that maybe I, I haven't done enough of um, and I need to work on a little bit more is the mental side of preparation. Um, but, yeah, this is this is um, crazy for me to watch. Yeah. Because uh, I – so I've been watching this guy, Julio La Cruz. I've been watching him box for like eight years or something now. Um, and I, the first time I saw him box, I was in grade 10 or 11 and I was like, I'm going to fight him one day. I watched it. I was like, I'm going to fight him one day and I need to work out what I'm going to do. Um, I wish I could have gotten the win, but um, I definitely acquitted myself well. Um, and, and, and so what was it like, uh, you know, meeting him uh, um, after the fight? And um, uh, It was, you know, I, it was it was the same as um, any opponent, to be honest. Um, for me, I always feel a great deal of respect for anyone that I box against. Um, we didn't really speak because he doesn't speak English. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> um, other I, can, I called him campeon, this champion in Spanish, but like, you know, like there's a, um, too much of a language barrier to have like a conversation, but, um, yeah, it was cool. I mean, I was, yeah, very disappointed and, um, for me, it normally takes until the next day for that to set in. So while I was smiling there, I was, I was pretty angry the next day, actually. Um, but yeah, overall, it was an incredible experience. Mm. Yeah. I've definitely learned a lot from that fight and started taking some things from that fight and applying them in my training and in, in competing as well. Yeah, unreal. Yeah, super cool to see, you know, someone from Canberra taking on the, yeah. the world's best. Yeah. yeah. And um, you mentioned earlier you both uh, knew each other sort of growing up um, and you both started boxing quite at a young age. Yeah. Um, Monique, I think six I read. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. How did you get into boxing um, and what was that like uh, at age six? So we went into – my dad – always loved boxing he always loved Rocky Marciano and Tim um Costa Zoo actually he was a big fan of Costa Zoo and he actually like um met him a few times and hung out with him a few times and dad always loved fighting um and there was five of us at the time five girls so he brought all of us down to the local PCYC and um I was actually too young to start boxing so he lied about my age <laughs> and I got in and started boxing under Joe Lay. At, do you remember him? Yeah, 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 yeah. At PCYC. And then um, I wasn't allowed to fight until I was 10. And I just remember thinking, like, I cannot wait 
Twice. Which PCYC was that? Arendelle. Arendelle yeah. PCYC, right. And um, I just remember like going in there, like it was just like sweaty boys everywhere. Yeah. That was it. There was no girls. Yeah. Like, and um, then all, yeah, all of us girls, <laughs> all of my sisters just boxed and I had really bad anger problems. Still, what do you mean, had? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, had? And, She's uh, angry right now. Look at her. <laughs> She's gritting her teeth. Yeah, pretty pissed. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, and it just helped control that a lot and um, it was a very good outlet for me. But that's how I got into it and then I had my first fight at the age of 10 and I actually lost, but reflecting on it, I was talking to someone about it maybe two days ago. Me? What? Yeah. So you're talking to me about it? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Word and Tradies, 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had it there, but um, I just remember being so happy after the fight like no matter what the outcome was mm. like i was over the moon just to get in there i think that's when i really fell in love with the sport mm. and um i actually then i boxed under paul perkins um coach paul perkins yeah for i think maybe seven years but um he pulled me away from fighting for that period of time so i had two fights at the age of 10 and then stepped away from fighting but I just kept training like trained every every day like I was fighting and um I think it gave me a really good time to develop and just grow as a boxer but not have that pressure of competing mm. and everyone I that was competing at that time like you see them now and they're no longer boxing mm. so I think his idea for me was just not to burn me out and I'm so so grateful for that because mm. I don't think I would actually be here um, boxing at the level I am if I was boxing back then all the way through that. Mm. But, um, yeah, no, I haven't turned back since. I, I love this sport and I don't think I'll ever stop till till, I old. Ch- until I'm old. <laughs> until your body stops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, and we met, I, after Paul, I transitioned to stockade under Gary Remember the first day I walked in there, I was like, who the hell is this man? Like, it was, Oh, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I walked in and he's like got this, this sh- he's holding this shield and Guy was actually punching oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was just in the corner and he was just yelling at me. He's like, be with you in a second, dear, and just get him punched. And <laughs> that's the first interaction I had with Gary. But, um, yeah, and I think we met maybe a few years after I was with Gary and you brought EK in to do some sparring with me. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, and that that's where sense. I met yeah, you. Yeah. 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 But we always cross paths and everything, mm. but never really yeah. said anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, because you, so how old were you when you started training at Stockade? I think 13 or 14. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I would have been about 15. So I used to go there for sparring um, every yeah. now and then. Um, cause there were other kids there around my size, my weight. Um, and yeah, like you said, I brought my little brother to spy you. So my, my little brother at the time would have been nine, I think. So he wouldn't have had any fights yet. Mm. Um, but he was, he, he was close to when he had his, he only had four fights when he was two, when he was 10, two, when he was 12, but, um, uh, he would have been similar size to you. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. Um, even now, probably still the same size. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, yeah, but I, yeah, I remember seeing you around um, mostly at Stockade. Um, and then I remember seeing uh, photos maybe on Facebook or something of you competing. Yeah. Um, where were you training out of? So I was, I was training with my dad yeah, out of my yeah. dad's gym up until I was... 17 when i was 17 i started training myself yeah um and i did come into stockade a lot um that was probably the main place that i trained but i didn't have a coach um but my older brother was training there and he was training with gary so he he was one of your training partners yeah um and i then i stopped boxing no so um, I started training with Gary before I stopped boxing. So I, I got an injury in 2017. Um, and that was when I was training myself. Um, and then had surgery, came back, um, 
and Gary actually took me on. So I actually started training directly with Gary. Um, and then, but I didn't have any fights. Uh, that was, that was late 2018, uh, not even early 2019 before I stopped boxing. Um, reason I stopped because of my arthritis. That's a story I've probably told too many times, so I'm not going to um, go into it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I stopped and then I, I didn't come back to boxing until late 2020 is when I, 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 I'd moved back to Canberra um, and uh, my boss at the time was always asking me about boxing because he's just a big fan of combat sports and um eventually i decided to go back to the gym and yeah the rest is history three years later here we are um almost almost exactly three years later i think it would have been august 2020 yeah roughly. yeah th uh, around three <coughs> years is when yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so but so we we really only first got to know each other when my brother was training with you yeah. and i started coming to the gym yeah. so that was maybe six years ago yeah, something like that. Wow. Um, yeah, and do do your other sisters still box? No, I no. wish they did. They were, they were like sometimes I still hold pads for them. Yeah, and I forget that they can actually throw yeah. punches. Like they have <laughs> yeah. hands. Yeah, my sister Sabrina, I I thought she was very naturally talented with boxing. Did any of them have any fights? No, Sabrina no. wanted to. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. but she never did. But. Um, I reckon she would have been a mad boxer. She had a similar style to Nina, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. But. And you both mentioned there your dad's had a big influence in mm. starting and mm. you were actually training with your 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 dad at the time. How important was that? Um, uh, I think so with me. So I, I grew up in boxing. Uh, so my dad was actually trained by Gary as well mm. for a little while. Um, he started boxing in Papua New Guinea. Um, and then um, was boxing in Queensland before he came down to Canberra. But um, he was a pro. He, he turned pro when I was, how old would I have been? Uh, two. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've always been at the gym and stuff, even as a toddler. Um, that's Gary. Gary met me when I was a toddler, actually. Um, unlucky me. Explains <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, um, when my older brother was maybe six, he started saying, I want to box, I want to box, I want to box. And of course I did as well. Um, and I think it wasn't until he was eight that my dad started training him a bit. Oh, sorry about that. No, you're all good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then... Um, it wasn't until I was about eight that I was allowed to start training as well. Um, and uh, my dad decided to like open up kind of a home gym. And so we ended up having like a lot of different people coming through, um, mostly just like troubled kids and stuff from the area. Um, some kids from the rugby club that we played at and stuff. Um, and yeah, just stuck with it ever since. Um, we ended up moving away from training with my dad because there was a lot of problems. Um, my dad ended up um, separated from the family. Um, and yeah, yeah. So we moved away from um, training with him. My brother did first and then I did later. Um, but yeah, that was definitely where it all started for me. I, I remember watching um, my dad sparring um, and like watching him fight on TV and stuff when I was a kid. So. Um, that was definitely what got me fixated on the sport and I've just been in love with it ever since. I think the moment that I realized I wanted to compete was probably, um, I think it was watching Floyd Mayweather fight Ricky Haddon. I think that was maybe in 2009 or something. Um, I remember watching that live and just thinking, I want to do this. Um, yeah. Yeah, awesome quarter quarter journey from that those yeah, young yeah, ages yeah and and Monet, your dad too is he yeah uh, he never, still at your fights or yeah well actually he came to my fight yesterday so um i think that would have been oh i think that was probably one of the only fights i've actually seen him at so it was actually really nice to have him 
yesterday. Um, it was a nice surprise to see him there. But, yeah, um, my dad never fought himself in the ring. Um, he was a good fighter, just not <laughs> just not boxing. <laughs> um, but I just remember him, he used to just hold his hands up for me and I used to just hit the hell out of them when I was a kid. But, um, no, I'm definitely grateful that my dad got me into the sport. Awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, he's uh, surprised, or not surprised, but... Proud to still see your boxing and knocking on the Olympics door. Yeah, now. Mm. yeah, he's he's very happy. Like, but he still keeps me in check. Like last night, he's <laughs> like, you still got a lot to work on. But <laughs> I'm like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> it's always the way with Dad. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, like you, um, you spoke about that you left the sport for a while mm. and. You've spoken also publicly uh, on your Instagram about what happened. I don't know if you want to talk about that today. We don't have to. Um, but he, was that um, – did you ever – you were told at one point that you would never box again, basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wasn't I, I wasn't so much told that I wouldn't be able to box again. It was more that uh, my – arthritis would never get better and something could get worse as particularly if I keep boxing um and so I was advised you know what I mean like think about your um I guess um well-being in the future you know what I mean um think about like what your life's gonna look like in 10 20 years from now whatever it is um and so that for me um combined with uh, i think uh i i just missed out on the commonwealth games um and um let me think i just finished school only a year before that as well so you know like a, a difficult point in time in life i was only 19 um so i wasn't really sure what i was supposed to do or where I was supposed to go. And so I tried to make a mature decision and be like, okay, um, this is only going to get worse. So maybe I should stop now and just be grateful that I still have use of my hands. And um, yeah, that was just the decision that I made at the time, but it was definitely the wrong decision. Um, Cause I mean, obviously you've, you've got to think about your health, but you got to think about all aspects of your health, not just the health of my hands. I got to think about my mental health. Um, I've got to think about my physical health. Um, you know, when I, when I stopped boxing, I, I, I never got out of shape from the perspective of like a regular person and definitely out of boxing shape. Um, but you know, I was exercising regularly where I was, you know, um, at the courts with my friends or just running or lifting weights or whatever it was, but, um, uh, not having, uh, something driving that I think made it mundane to me. Um, and yeah, not boxing definitely had a massive impact on my mental health, had an impact on my creativity as well as an artist. Like, um, I didn't notice it straight away, but maybe, I think nine to 12 months after I stopped boxing, I started getting a lot of creative block. Um, whereas when I came back to boxing, I started having like massive creative surges. Um, so the, they're definitely closely linked. And, and I think the main thing for me, it wasn't that I wasn't boxing because um, – you'd think that then I, I, I would never be able to walk away from it and I'd just be one of those guys that ends up too old for it and gets retired by the sport. But I think it was that I wasn't able to walk away from it on my own terms. And I still had a lot of questions about myself. I, I was dealing with a lot of imposter syndrome, you know what I mean? Because I'd still watch boxing. Um, and so it would make me question myself a lot and question what I thought I knew about myself. Because um, when I... When I walked away from it I thought that I was a guy that had potential to be world class but I just hadn't recognized or realized it yet and um, that my time was cut short and then it started to get to a point where I was like is that really true <laughs> um, and coming back to the sport made me question that even more because at first coming back you know it was really hard mm -hmm. um, especially you know I wasn't able to do things that I know how to do in theory i couldn't do them in practice because i've you know been out of the ring so long um and you know it was out of shape um and then yeah i mean going to the world championships 
um, really killed that imposter syndrome, I guess. I was like, yeah, I absolutely, I'm a world-class athlete now. Um, so absolutely, I was right about what I thought about myself all those years growing up as a teenager. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's quite a, a, a common story with athletes and injuries, isn't it? You hear yeah, about yeah, like, yeah. Um, career-ending injuries and stuff just mm. being but it's not often you get you hear the story of the, the person that comes back yeah 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 so that's really cool to hear yeah um and both of you back in canberra last night fighting in front of a home crowd mm. how was that it was actually really cool um, despite being a bit sick, both of us. Uh, yeah, back from, from uh, Bali training camp. With the belly. With the belly. <laughs> the dreaded belly. <laughs> got a, got, it was almost a long day. Write it in the script, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. a really long day, but yeah. um, no, it, it was actually fun. I hadn't boxed in Canberra in front of my family for over three years now. So it was really good to be back in front of a home crowd actually and um about like pressure before I felt nothing like and I was Mm. saying to Ike like I actually don't feel nervous I have nothing I have no feelings but I don't know if it was because of how late it was and I was feeling a bit sick but Mm. I just wanted to get in and out to be honest but I like lived in the moment for the first time like walking out which is really cool um and I was just happy to see my family there to be honest and be able to just box in front of them and have fun with it um and for a good cause too so it was i thought it was a really cool night mm. yeah. absolutely yeah 100 we'll, percent agree we'll, with that we'll chuck in the link i think it was muscle up yeah muscle yeah, up. yeah 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 so the um it's the capital muscular dystrophy yeah. organization or something along those lines i'm probably butchering the name right now yeah um, we'll chuck it in the, in yeah. the link if you want to support, yeah, get behind it. Tell us about the uh, the world champs adventure you had, where um, something it was. You had another uh, food poisoning, and that really yeah. is like the worst timing possible it for was. something like that to happen <laughs> when you're about to compete in I the world champ. S- yeah, I'm very grateful for the experience at world championships, but India just wasn't. It wasn't it for me. So leaving to go to world championships from Canberra to, I think it was Canberra to Thailand or something like that. I was just, I had to get um, my COVID vaccines before going to India. Um, And everyone told me like the third jab was fine, like not to worry about it, you'll be fine. I was so sick, like really sick. (laughs) Like, And um so landing in India, like I just wasn't feeling well. And I remember after we got our bags up these massive steps at this hotel, I just like sat on the couch and our team captain, Katie, just looks at me. She's like, you're right, Mon. And I just started crying. Like just tears were rolling down my face. <laughs> and um, and then so I rested like for a few days. And then luckily we had, I think, one week until the tournament actually started. Yeah. So I recovered fine. And then... I drew Russia on the first day and my stomach was feeling a bit iffy, but it was all right. Yeah. And then so I fought Russia the first day and she was tough. Like she was... She was strong, She was was built like... like... She did not stop punching. Like I was on the back foot the whole time, but I'll just have to like... I was picking her off really well and I was like did what I had to do. But far out, I was... After the fight, I was like, God, like nearly threw up on this girl but it was good we got it done and then I drew Italy for I got I think I got a day's rest and then I fought Italy but the day that day's rest I woke up oh maybe it was the middle of the night yeah I woke up in the middle of the night and I was just so sick like really sick they ended up getting um I called the head coach at I think like one o'clock in the morning and then at th- maybe two o'clock he calls me back <laughs> and he's like, you okay, Monique? And I was like, no, like I need to see someone. Like, Monique, what's wrong? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I was so sick and my, um, 
it was just a it was a mess <coughs> and they wanted to take me to hospital but I was like if I go to hospital I'm not gonna fight yeah, I'm gonna you, yeah. yeah so I was like I'm just gonna push through <laughs> and they gave me like medication and stuff and I was like it stopped like some symptoms but I was just so nauseous I was fighting at 52 kilos too and I ended up weighing in like after that day I was 50 kilos like that's how much I lost like and it was just it was so bad and um so I was just but it's so hard because you need to like refuel and re like hydrate because you've lost so much fluid but then you have to make weight the next day yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just knew if I was drinking electrolytes my body was going to hold on to that water like there was mm. no tomorrow mm. and especially because I was already cutting a little bit of water to make 52 and um so one of the coaches came in and was like Monique like you need to eat you need to drink and I was like I need to make weight tomorrow like what do you mean they're like, oh, we'll get you food that you can eat. Anyway, room service comes and it's like spicy chicken, like <laughs> some naan bread and what else? They had this soup and I remember like I was just eating this potato soup. Yeah. And then um, the next day I checked my weight on the scales and I think I was just bang on 52 kilos like because I like lost nothing because the medication just stops everything. Yeah, yeah. So... I like went to the weigh in, hopped on the scales. I had to strip off in front of everyone because um I was point zero zero three over or something like that. So yeah. I had to like strip down in front of everyone and I was like, God, this is a good start. And um then we got to the fight and I mentally I just told myself I was okay. Like yeah. everyone asked at home, they're like, How are you feeling? And I was like, Yeah, I feel great. Like yeah. we're gonna do really well. Like I'm I'm happy. I'm excited to be here. Mm. I was miserable. Yeah. I was just so unwell. But even walking out, like, I just felt like shit. And then after the first round, I came back to the corner and the coach was like, you have to change. Like, you have to change something. Like, it's not going well. And then I think I had a short burst of, like, really good boxing in the second round. And then my energy just depleted completely and I just could not throw a punch. And everyone back home messaged me saying, like, you just weren't on. Mm. And coach, like, Gary, our coach, was like, I've seen you not punch before and defend well and I've seen you defend well and not punch but never both. And, like, I just stood there like a stun mullet and, mm. just, yeah, it was really hard to get through. So, and that was heartbreaking. That girl ended up winning silver at Worlds, so... Um, but yeah, that was the worst experience. Um, how many people got sick on the women's team? Well, everyone, yeah. everyone had like a little bit of something, mm. but, um, I think I was really bad. Yeah. yeah. Like I was really yeah. bad. A few of them like just had a little bit of sickness. Mm. Oh, I think T was bad too, mm. but, mm. um, no, like this place we stayed, it was like amongst the slums. So, um, it was a nice hotel though. Wasn't it was a it? nice hotel, yeah, but it yeah. just stunk. Like it, everything yeah. smelled. You couldn't get rid of it. As soon as you stepped outside, walking back from weigh in, cause we had to walk 200 meters to the next hotel to weigh in, walking back after drinking like fluid and stuff, like the smell just hit me and I was just gagging on the side of the road. Like it was, it was the worst in the kitchen. I looked up and there was just a rat running across like the ceiling and, all of us were like, no, nah, fuck this. <laughs> like, it, was it, was, it was Remy. <laughs> Remy the rat. Because oh. the, the men's team, we all got sick as well when we were in Uzbekistan. And all of us got gastro as well. I think it's yeah. just like adapting to the food, but also yeah. like... Well, I think our water here is too clean. Oh, 100%. I, I, yeah. We've got like the cleanest water in the world mm. here, so uh, we get sick. Even, I think, like I know people that have been to like you know, the US or the UK and they get sick. And it's just yeah. from the water, um, just because it's not as good as ours here, which, you know, you can either take that as a as a yeah. blessing or a curse. But um, you need to do a few laps yeah. in, like, gin and dare or something. Yeah, oh. yeah, get, build up the immunity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But nothing prepares you for that, hey. I yeah. think, like, um, Gary was saying to me, he's like, you just need to, needed to bite down and push through. And I was <laughs> like, I couldn't. I physically couldn't. You bite down and push too hard. It was just kind yeah. of... <laughs> No, it was, it was, it was definitely a learning experience though. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, God. you're never gonna be 100 at, nah. at those kinds of no times. No way. And you just gotta. 
I don't know why they hold them into like countries like that yeah. though. I think it's because they can get In, away with not paying taxes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to it, but yeah. but yeah, that's <coughs> definitely one of the worst experiences mm. for sure. I oh, know the goal at the moment is Olympics, but do you guys see a, a professional Ooh. career mm. after? Um, for me, definitely, um, because unlike what Monique said earlier about you know the Olympics has always been the goal for for me, it's always been a professional world title that was what got me into boxing um and and the olympics got added in when i realized that most of the fighters that i looked up to went to the olympics and and won gold at the olympics most of the ones that i looked up to as well so that was um, a pathway yeah, yeah yeah so for me in my mind when i envisioned my future it was always that i had to go to the olympics and win and then turn pro and work towards a world title so um um, that's what brought the Olympic goal in for me. Um, and it's absolutely 100% my main focus right now. Um, but then once this Olympic cycle is finished, I do plan on turning professional. Um, they're different sports. Um, a lot of people don't realize that, but that's the difference between professional boxing and amateur boxing is, is not the quality. It's just that they're different rule sets. Um, and I think uh that i'll enjoy the professional rule set um more than the amateur rule set not to say that i don't enjoy amateur boxing i i, I love it a lot um but yeah i mean the, the difference between the two is the olympic rules versus the marcus of queensbury rules um yeah and yeah 100 percent, i want to make that transition um once the olympic cycle's over yeah i don't see myself going pro anytime soon just because like olympics is the main goal i want two olympic cycles hopefully but i think um pros seem fun like the mm. whole like press conferences and being able to just make like a like a character for yourself is pretty cool yeah yeah like, yeah and also like the money side of it too you know, mm. we don't really make money as amateurs. We don't make money at all. At all. <laughs> Unless, you know. That's we, an Australian thing, though. Yeah. That's not, that's not, um, that's not the case around yeah. the world. Um, there's not many countries where your national team boxers don't get paid. Yeah. It's almost. Um, it was quite funny yeah. going uh, like around the world and like a lot of boxers would be shocked that we get, we don't, like we have jobs. They're like, what do you mean jobs? <laughs> like, we have <laughs> to make Boxing money. Is your job. Yeah. yeah, like for them, yeah. like all they have to do is make weight. Like every few months, like be under five percent, and they get their salary. Mm. Like, we have crazy. to, we have to pay actually. To, yeah, we have to pay. <laughs> we have to pay <laughs> to represent our country. I still have debt from going to the World Championships. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so. that's another side of it you don't hear about yeah. too. Yeah. Um, you were you were fundraising for your trip too, yeah. Um, and that's one thing I did notice that you are doing so much travel to try and tick these uh, yeah. qualifying boxes off. Yeah. Um, and I didn't realize that was all all self funded, basically. Um, not not entirely yeah. self funded, um, mm. but predominantly. Um, and so when we went to Europe for me, that was entirely self-funded. Um, when I went to the world championships, I was 50% funded because I was competing in an Olympic weight. Um, and if I get, um, invited to go to the next trip, which is in Germany in October, that'll probably be self-funded entirely. Um, whereas I think for oh, you, for me, it's a bit different because I got categorized this year as a developing boxer under combat Oz. So I, being on scholarship with them, they either fully fund or partly fund a lot of my trips, which is awesome. Um, Europe, so I recently went to Poland and Italy and that was fully funded. So, um, yeah, like some trips like that, mm. we do have to. But it still doesn't make up for the fact that you're away for a month not making any yeah, money. Exactly you know right, I mean? Yeah, exactly right, yeah. You know, you still got to, fully funded just means you're, 
accommodation yeah, and your, your travel. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. there's still plenty of other things that you have to pay for when you travel. Yeah. As yeah. anyone that's been overseas would know. Especially like food. You don't realise yeah, how yeah. much money you spend on food. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, yeah, there's still a long way to go. Um, mm. Yeah. And your 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 full time job is that at Stockade. Like uh, well, or? I haven't really worked for about yeah. five months, probably yeah. six months. Yeah, but properly. you train there. But yeah, yeah just train full time lately, and um, but I do do PTs out of Stockade and classes out of Stockade. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and I'm doing a bit of um, PTs and coaching as well at Stockade. Um, but yeah, I haven't been employed properly since uh it's been about a year now i was working in landscaping um but yeah i've been full-time boxing for a year now um and yeah it's financially difficult but seeing the results from the boxing Mm. side of things is what spurs it on i guess yeah Yeah. it's that passion there (coughs) and um and much like uh your other um work in in the hip hop rap music space, you're still, as well as boxing, p- pushing your head with all that. As you said, creatively, uh, they've gone really well together. Mm. Um, you've got shows coming up, Stonefest. Just one, just one. Yeah, or sh- yeah. a show at Stonefest. Yeah. Um, you've been putting on events too since we last spoke. Yeah. How, um, how's that been? Was that. I'm trying to remember what year that was. It was only a year ago. Um, yeah, I put on maybe four events last year. Um, that was really cool. I, I wanted to keep doing it this year, but with the opportunities I have for boxing, I just I wasn't going to have the time. It just wasn't going to be possible. Um, I, I have had a lot of people say, you know, when when's the next landing or, you know, and, and I do intend on doing those events again. Um, but, yeah, just unfortunately I haven't had the time to put it together. Um as well as the money, you know, because again, you know, when I did that, um, I, I did get some grants here and there, but a lot of that money was coming out of my own pocket as well. And that's, again, another thing people don't realize, just like how people don't realize that our Olympic athletes are self-funded, except for when they're in their actual Olympic year. That's the only time they get paid for. Um, same with, uh, um, what's the word? Sorry. Um Arts or so, well, yeah, music, with that, with yeah. the arts, music, yeah. like a, a lot of um, grassroots events are self funded by whoever's putting them on, um, mm. and we normally lose money or, or just break even. Uh, I broke even on two events and lost money on two events. Um, wouldn't change that for the world, you know what I mean? Because there was still great learning experiences and and fun events, um, but that's just the nature of the game. Mm. So, yeah, so I, I think once once I have um, a little bit more time and, and a bit more income, I'll definitely get back to doing some events um, of my own as well as um, performing a bit more. Um, I don't think I'm going to play another show other than Stonefest this year just because I don't really want to play again until I put out some new content, which I do have um sitting in the vault nice nice <laughs> just planning the release and stuff um but uh yeah I, i'm sort of uh biding my time i, I want it to be right um the next time I, I um make another run with music i guess yeah unreal and monique what's next uh in your calendar you got um, the pacific yeah, we're about to go on a camp for two weeks here in Canberra, the AIS. Uh, we leave, oh, it's on Wednesday, we start camp and we get back, uh, finish camp on the 13th. And then from there, I think they're looking at sending us over to Germany for a tournament before Pacific Games. And then, um, yeah, Solomon Islands for Pacific Games. But uh, in that, in the meantime, just training, training hard and Staying ready. Yeah. I think it's um this time's the most important time to look back at the mistakes you made during nationals and even like more recent fights and looking at who I'm gonna be versing and like adapt like changing styles to who I might be fighting. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of people see us like training's one side of it and that mm. is the hard part. 
um, but also video analysis, like um, looking at who you're going to be fighting mm. and like stuff like mental preparation too. It like takes a lot of time, like, and people don't realize that, mm. but yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. I think just, yeah, keep, keep at training. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy now. Like once some people know they've made it, they kind of slack off, but. Take the foot off the gas. Yeah. 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 But I think now, like, I just want to, I just want to go um, full force into the next, mm. into the next thing, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me, um, I, I was saying earlier this year, like, it, it's funny with um, sports, you, you work really hard to get an opportunity and what that opportunity is, is a situation where you have to work even harder. Yeah. <laughs> so you work until you feel like your body's yeah. going to break and then it's like, okay, cool. Now let's do even more than what we just did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's what elite sports is. 100%. Um, yeah. And you're never satisfied either, I no. feel. Like it's so easy to win. And like, I don't know, sometimes you feel like you're happy. Yeah. But yeah, you're yeah. not satisfied. Yeah, yeah. You're not yeah. content. Yeah. 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 I feel like this this situation is how I feel like with Pacific Games. Like I'm happy that I've qualified, but mm -hmm. I'm not satisfied yet. Mm. So once, yeah, I think until once I'm qualified or until I'm in Paris. But even then you won't. Yeah, you know, no, like, yeah. I just you'll keep be, training. <laughs> you'll be standing on the Olympic podium and you'll be like, I want more. I want more. <laughs> but that, I think that's what makes like. I want Pluto. Top. Let's go. <laughs> I think that's what makes top level athletes yeah. is, is that um, that desire to get more. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think it's something that some people might find hard to understand, like just that drive, like um, mm. just yeah, more, 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 more. Like how many people come up to you and be like, "Oh, so when are you gonna like actually have a break and like relax, have some downtime?" <laughs> and you're just like, "What do you mean, not, man? Like how? When am not, I going uh, to?" That's not how it works. It's not realistic. Yeah. This is why you break, like, in in an athlete's head, I feel like it's, like, if you're having a break, your opponent's, your opponent's going to beat you. Yeah, they're yeah, working they're hard. Yeah. And they're going to be, yeah. Mm. That being said, uh, rest and recovery is important. Yeah. Um, but that's part of your training as well. Oh, 100%, you know I mean? yeah. But, yeah, like, we didn't, we didn't, uh, I think when we are going to Bali, a few people were like, thinking that we were going on a holiday yeah. we were training two or three times a day yeah. while we were there i think we had one day where we didn't train but we did um, train oh, oh yeah no. <laughs> we had one day that was meant to be a day off we went and like saw elephants and rode atvs and that kind of stuff and then we got back and i looked at monique and she's like you want to go for a run and i'm like yeah, yeah. let's let's go for a run <laughs> you know um it's fucking crazy yeah yeah it's just that's what it is yeah was there Oh, we'll wrap it up here pretty much, but was there anything else you wanted to uh, talk about or ask each other? Um, um, I know you, you've been spending a lot of time together on flights and stuff, but... Mm. He sleeps the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so now's your opportunity yeah. if, if, if there is anything um, that you um, want to talk about. Quickly, I just want to mention um, we have started a new fundraiser, a GoFundMe for me and Monique um, awesome. while we keep charging towards the olympics um so that's to help us cover things like travel um nutrition recovery um just all the things that go into being an athlete yeah. um and we'll add the link yeah. to this as well as uh, we'll post it up on social media um, is that on gofundme again? yeah it's, it's a GoFundMe. Your, one. it's not out yet no no it? i haven't yeah. posted it but yeah. uh, i i will post it um today later today i guess um and yeah um any amount that anyone can donate helps if it's a dollar it's a dollar like you know it it all yeah. adds up everything's 100%. appreciated yeah definitely no definitely get out there hmm. um and thank you for taking some time out of your uh your busy schedule um no thank you uh, thanks for having yeah. us yeah We're very keen awesome. to follow the journey and uh See you in Paris. Hopefully, yeah, that's yeah. that's the goal. It's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Bye. Cheers. Thank you for watching, everyone, and uh, we'll catch you on the next app. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Bang. Done. <coughs> that's cool.